make a video reacting to your first ever YouTube video that you uploaded on YouTube ever in the world. God, you know how I feel about reaction videos, let alone reacting to myself. All right, just this one time, because it's Christmas, okay? But never, ever again. God forbid, reaction videos, where's the pork gone? Hello and welcome back to the Abroad Japan ramen shop where dreams come true, unless you dream too big. Icarus. Now, I don't really like reaction videos, and I've only done one ever, I think, on Abroad in Japan, and that was this year in January when I made a video reacting to about 500 Japanese YouTubers reacting to me as I, in turn, reacted to Japan. It was a really great video, quality content, and I'm uh, really glad that I made that one. But I get this request a lot to go back and revisit my first ever YouTube video. And it could be fun now, given 10 years have passed almost, it's about nine and a half years. So, let's go and do it. Let's collectively cringe at the first ever Abroad in Japan video that kicked off this decade-long journey. And along the way, I'll talk about how I found it living alone in that tiny apartment. Now, because it was 2012, uh, the video quality isn't overly great. It was shot in 720p, joke resolution. What a loser! 720p, it's not even full HD. But using modern technology and miracle CGI wonder trickery, you have actually upscaled that 720p video into 4K, and the results are surprisingly impressive. This is the first time I've ever upscaled and remastered an original video into 4K. Uh, it's a shame it's the worst video ever made. And to make things fun, every time I cringe at myself in the video, I'm gonna take a shot of my least favorite drink, one cup sake. Why not join in at home? You don't have to drink something alcoholic. I don't want lots of people to die watching this video. That wouldn't be fun for anyone. Oh God, instant regret. Instant regret indeed. So, to set the scene, this video came out in August 2012 and I posted it on August 15th. By that point, I'd been living in Japan almost exactly two weeks. I was still very much confused, disorientated, probably a little bit jet lagged as well. And just the opening frame of this video with my stupid, greasy, strawberry face is enough to make me feel uh, embarrassed. So I'm gonna take a shot and let's begin. Every morning, generally without fail, uh, I get woken up by a hawk. At least I think it's a hawk. I don't know a lot about uh, birds and I don't really care for birds much, but uh, this hawk means I no longer need to use my alarm clock. Um, so I'm saving electricity. So in essence, the hawk has actually lowered my cost of living. And it's innovations like that uh, in Japan that you just look at and go, why don't we do that in England? Um, and the honest, you know, the honest answer, I don't know. I don't know why we don't do it in England. Um, yeah, I, I still agree with that, to be honest. Um, the hawk was there pretty much my entire first year, and then one day it was gone, just disappeared, and I never saw it again. What I'll say about this is, first things first, the composition of the shot is shocking. Honestly, it looks like I've been rolling around in a bucket of grease, but to be fair, it was the height of summer, and uh, I, just, I hadn't learned the golden rule at this point, which is that you should always shoot your videos at a slightly elevated angle, because it's more flattering for your face, right? I remember when I made this video though, I didn't really know who I was making it for. I, I think maybe my family and friends back home. The idea was to like, just chronicle my life in Japan and just be like, look how cool Japan is, woo. No, I didn't think it would ever become something bigger than that. I never thought that it would blow up into something else. Okay, this is sad, right? So this is a shot of Tokyo. This was actually just after I'd landed and I was on the bus going from Narita Airport into central Tokyo. I was blown away by the scale of Tokyo and, and just how damn big it is, you know. It makes London look like someone's back garden. This is really sad. In the video, I had a really cool song here, the uh, Sukiyaki song, a really beautiful Japanese song. And for the first year or so, I had no problems using this song. And then one day I got a copyright strike and the video actually got completely delisted from YouTube for a few years before before they allowed it back on, but they removed the song and replaced it with whatever this is. And you can't hear me speaking, because he got fucked up. That's such a shame. Don't know what I'm saying, but it's probably something really clever. The town that I live in is surrounded by sea on one side, we've got the Sea of Japan. Uh, and on the other side, we've got a ton of mountains, which look beautiful, amazing. Uh, one in particular dominates the skyline, it's called Mount Chokai and it has been called Mount Fuji. Mount Chokai. It's my, uh, my bad pronunciation there. It's actually called Mount Chokai. First time in Japan, didn't really speak Japanese. Pronunciation wasn't very good. Chokai. Mount Chokai sounds like a chocolate dessert. 
Um, beautiful mountain, mate. Honestly, I was really excited to move somewhere where there was just a mountain on my doorstep. And what a beautiful mountain it is. It's one of the tallest in North Japan, 2,200 meters. I'm still learning Japanese. Um, so I can't also notice my voice is like it's, not, it's a bit more really kind of what I sounded like, like before I, I came to Japan. So it can take 40 minutes. Just kind of it. sounded more like this. Oh, I'm in Japan. Oh, now we've moved to a better camera angle. But again, I'm slumped in the chair in a horribly unflattering green top. Like looking at how I'm sitting and looking at how this is framed, you can tell I never thought anyone was going to watch this video. Oh, good fuck. I'm still learning Japanese. Um, so I can't actually read a lot, which makes the smallest things pretty difficult. Like microwaving a pizza, it can take 40 minutes just to work. It really did. It's awful. Oh, five, five. Wait a minute. You can actually hear the music no. underneath playing. No. You can hear the song. It didn't. And then we hit That's the, the song button. that like got fucked earlier on, I guess, because I'm okay. talking over it. It's fine. Okay. Never, by the way, never use any copyrighted stuff from Japan, whether it's a song, whether it's anime. You, they take it very seriously here and you will be destroyed. It's not fun. Like other songs, I've used copyrighted songs quite a lot over the years. I don't do it now. But YouTube usually just lets you keep the song, but they take the ad revenue. For Japanese songs though, they just take your whole video off. So don't do it. Be careful. It's really sad having a video of yours removed, right? I've seen two fireworks displays whilst being here and they are ridiculously big. Um, I look like I'm just falling asleep as I'm talking. Uh, 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 ridiculously big, these fireworks display. <laughs> Fucking hell. Where's the energy? Where's, where's the enthusiasm? It's a pretty big experience, um, but pretty cool. And they go on for about- To be fair, Japan does a good fireworks display. Like the best I've ever seen has been here. But yeah, it's a copyrighted song there from um, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Didn't get buggered for that. Weird. Just things just don't make sense on YouTube. It's the small things that make Japan interesting, like this apartment or flat or bedsit or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so yeah, an apartment. It's called an apartment, you dickhead. Oh, I hate myself. I actually hate myself. Take a shot. I remember this apartment really well, so I actually really liked it, despite its size and limitations, as we'll, as we'll see. But it cost, I think, about $120 a month, because it was government-subsidised accommodation. Um, some other teachers, though, in my town, in Sakata, in Yamagata, were really unlucky. Um, one colleague of mine got put in a house, and she had to pay $600, $700 a month, just because she got unlucky getting sort of assigned to that house. So. It's a really weird system, but I one that I benefited from, one I was very lucky to, to have. Okay, so this is my sink area and kitchen area. As you can see, there's absolutely no room for cooking or preparing anything, which means I have to go uh, out and eat every night. Uh, it's just the way it is because I can't cook. Point to add, the kitchen was like really bad. Um, there was, it was really hard cooking that kitchen. And in subsequent videos after this, I often had like an ironing board in shot. Right, you can see behind the kitchen in some shots, I've just got an ironing board. I never ironed anything on that board in, in the three years that I lived here, but I certainly cooked a lot of food on it and it got very dirty and very stained over the course of those three years. But, but it's a sad day when you need to use an ironing board as like valuable kitchen space. Okay, this is the shower room. Uh, I don't know if that is a bathtub or just something he's standing. If it's a bath, then I don't know how I would fit in it. Uh, I don't really know what this is either, but you can do this. It is a bath, and I did fit in it, even if it was a squeeze, to be honest. Um, the bath was actually quite nice, because the baths are, they're really deep. While you have to sort of curl up into a ball to sit in it, the water goes up really high, so you can really submerse yourself beneath the water and uh, I have a lot of fond memories in that bath. In the winter months it got really cold and after work every day I would just sit in the bath for a few hours and uh, just watch some anime. The first thing I watched while sitting in this bath was the series Great Teacher Onizuka GTA and uh, the theme song for that, Driver's High, was done by Hyde from Larkensiel. So it's kind of crazy looking at that and thinking, oh, I used to sit in that bath watching that show. If only I'd known then that I'd actually meet the man that wrote the song. Very weird. Uh, I don't really know what this is either, but you can do this, um, and then you can, you, can, you can do that as well. So that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> so that 
thing is for uh, keeping the water hot. If you've got multiple people using the bath, right? In Japan, you wash yourself with the shower, so you clean yourself. Then you get in the bath and relax, get out, and then the next person can get in and use the water that's supposed to be clean. But uh, you use that to keep the water hot. Uh, it's not just some random thing there. But I can understand why I didn't know what the hell it was at the time. Okay, so here is the toilet. Oh, I love, this is such a clever toilet though. Not in the sense that it's electronic like a lot of Japanese toilets, but this thing here. God, I hate my voice. When you flush the toilet, it refills this bit up from a sink that you can wash your hands in. So you go to the toilet, flush that, and then look. Oh, you can wash your hands. You got about 30 seconds to wash your hands. So how clever is that? So that's really recycling water, and it just gets me excited every time. Such a simple little thing, but so clever. To be fair, it's pretty clever. And if that doesn't excite you, nothing will. I love just how unenthusiastic I am about everything this. If that doesn't excite you, nothing will. I'd like to think I sound better than that now. Please, please back me up there. So yeah, uh, pretty good first run, quite spacious in terms of just being able to do everyday stuff. Is it? But let's Is go it? and check out the room that we've all been waiting for. Da da! Oh, I better tidy it up. Da da! Here it is. My main room. Uh, as you can see, it's a reasonable size, um, especially for one person. Uh, it's got a really cool sofa. I've never sat on it once because I love this chair too, too much. Uh, it oh, I love that chair so much. I often sit there and uh, watch amazing Japanese oh, It sounds like I'm about to fall asleep. So this is my first ever place living alone. Um, at university I live with a few friends. Here I was alone. And it's a really strange thing living alone. I remember I'd get home from work at like 4 or 5 p.m. I'd eat something, usually some chicken, and sit down on the sofa and I'd just fall asleep. And for the first time in my life, and this is a weird thing, I had nobody there to wake me up. You know, uh, growing up, I had my family, I lived at the house, and then at university, my friends would always be loud and annoying. And here, I was just, I was just asleep, and nobody would wake me up. And it, I remember just waking up like two hours later on the sofa and being like, oh, I'm, I'm alone. <laughs> and uh, it was the first few times it happened, I, I felt really sad about that. And uh, you know, living alone. I grew to love it, but early on in the first year I did find it a little bit tough. And uh, if you ever get homesick or lonely, my advice is just put on something that makes you laugh, like a comedy show from, you know, from back home. Um, in my case, I watch shows like Blackadder or Only Fools and Horses, British sitcom stuff that I used to love, and that would keep me happy and take my mind off of the existential crisis I was having on an almost daily basis. <laughs> Uh, if you do have a Japanese TV, you have to pay the NHK like license fee, the TV license fee. And one time, basically, if it happens, you get a knock at your door, and someone will be like NHK, and then you, the trick is just don't don't ever answer the door. You have to hide. Um, that's what everyone does. Nobody wants to deal with these people. But nobody told me that. So the first time it happened, I let the guy in, and he must have been in my apartment for one hour trying to sell me some sort of package. And then it turned out I already had one, and he got a bit angry and left. So. <laughs> Jake was on him. <laughs> okay, so this is a traditional uh, Japanese kind of eating table. I don't eating oh, table. Don't eating table. Underneath, it's got a heater. Ah, uh, kotatsu. So in the winter, uh, when you sit here with your legs underneath the table, you can keep warm uh, because typically Japanese accommodation uh, and houses aren't that well insulated against the cold, and it gets pretty cold here. Uh, over here. The kotatsu is an ingenious thing. You sort of go under it and uh, you have a blanket that goes in the table and sort of goes over you and keeps you warm in winter. Incredible thing. Never used it once in that apartment. Never used it once at all. Uh, over here, got quite a lot of uh, space for putting... I still remember, I still remember what that cupboard felt like, pulling it, how it felt. Because I had to do it every single day. Um, because as you would have seen, there's no bed in the apartment, I have to roll out a futon. So every morning when I got up for work, I would roll it away, stick it in the cupboard, and then when I got home from work after dinner, around 9 p.m., I would unroll it, put the duvet down, put the pillows down. It was a really strange existence, but I didn't mind it. I kind of liked using the space in a clever way. A lot of people I knew didn't bother to put their futon away and uh, their apartments were just shit. 
Credit where it's due, I did keep this apartment tidy. You had to, given how damn small it was. Wardrobe, um, pretty colourful. Don't know where that pink shirt went. I don't, why is, I don't think I ever wore that once. And people say I don't have enough drip. Look at that, that's a pink shirt that is. That's a cool, you know, that's more drip than the River Thames. Good enough. Good don't know where it went, I think it's in the bin. This is a bit odd. I've got a mirror here, fair enough. Uh, but there it seems to be some sort of outline a female outline uh, that's been stuck on with tissue paper and I don't know why uh, it's even more worrying knowing that my predecessor was in fact a, a guy um, as well so I don't know what he was doing at all right so the person that lived in the apartment before me I later discovered that uh, they're a bit of a troublemaker and they caused a lot of problems for my school for my colleagues just for everyone in the community and he sold me a lot of the stuff in the apartment at a high rate, like higher than it should have been, um, and was a little bit of a, of a dick, to be fair. He did have good taste, because the entire apartment was kitted out by him, and I didn't change anything. I don't know to this day what the actual fuck the tissue paper on the mirror was all about. Um, it was very bizarre. Um, so if you, if you have any guesses, let me know, because I still haven't worked it out after nine years what that was for and why the fuck he did it. Okay, so these are Japanese sliding doors, also known as shoji. Um, because they slide, they don't take up that much room, so they're quite clever, and they let in um, light. And it uh, makes the room really nice, so you can keep them shut and keep the room cool. This is my, this is my uh, balcony. It looks <laughs> just terrible, um, but I love the way when you open the door, just the sound of the cicadas just gets very, very loud. Like in summer. In Japan, from like July to August, it just it's just deafening. Like you can't sleep. You think the hawks are bad? Get ready for the cicadas. But I was rewarded with my balcony with two of the most rusted chairs I've ever seen. They were so horrible. I don't know what I did with them. I think I kept them and just left them in the side. But I did decorate the balcony. I did put some effort in. I got some fake grass and a table. It was lovely. Never sat out there once. It's just too hot or too cold. So just come and sit out here and relax. Um... Me and my neighbours drink um, a lot of water. Water, uh, of course, comes in cans in Japan, so, yeah. Um, but no, we sit here, it and does. it's yeah. lovely. Yeah. And here's my pretty, not great view, but uh, does the job. You can sit out here and uh, drink water, and that's my air conditioning unit as well. Great. A lot of water. Drank a lot of water back then, and I, uh, I still do. This is the main room, um, very nice, and it's got some sort of rug, which is always good. It's just a rug. Why do I complicate everything? It's just a rug. It can just, why can't it just be a rug? Surprise. It's a futon. I roll it out every night, uh, put it away every morning. It's a bit of effort, but, you know, it's not a problem, and it's very comfortable, um, lovely to sleep on. It's the biggest bed I've ever had, but this is like a double bed almost, um, and it's very comfortable, um, and pretty good. So let's have a look. Ta-da! Wow, such great special effects on the Abroad Japan channel. Um, yeah, pretty comfortable. <coughs> Love it. <sighs> so, yeah, I mean, the bed was quite big. It was a, it was a big, almost like double-sized bed, to be fair, and uh, it was very strange sleeping on the floor for three years, but I think it really helped my back in a weird kind of way. I always slept very well on that futon. I don't know if it was the more because of the space, or you just know you're never gonna fall out of bed. When you sleep on the floor like that, the whole floor of the room just feels like an extension of your bed, and that is my favorite thing about sleeping on a futon. Honestly, the only downside was just putting it away and getting it out every single day. If you, if you could avoid doing that, then it'd be perfect, the perfect way to sleep. So, like, way, at this point, I've just like forgotten there's a camera there, and I'm just like kneeling on my bed, complaining about things. Um, presentation skills, sorely lacking. Honestly, I did like living in this apartment quite a lot um, early on. It felt like I was living like this movie lifestyle, this adventure, right? That's not a normal place to go and live. And uh, sleeping on the floor, doors that go like this, a hawk, you know. I felt like I was living in a movie or something. And uh, I really did kind of enjoy it. Like I didn't need an apartment that was bigger than that. And it made me think very carefully about the things I was gonna buy and what I was gonna put in the apartment. And ultimately I didn't really buy anything because I knew that it was gonna be a temporary thing. 
And also, you have to be really mindful when you live in a space that big because because you can just fill it up so damn quickly and so easily and effortlessly. Okay, so that's my apartment. Uh, pretty good value for money, um, less than £100 a month. So for the size, I think it's great. And it's perfect for living uh, alone. Alone. Yeah. Again, I actually like living alone, but not really then. It was a bit weird still. Um, I was a little bit chubby when I started out doing YouTube, and that was because I was quite stressed and anxious uh, moving to Japan. So I used to eat a ton of really unhealthy food. And I couldn't cook, like when I came to Japan, I, I couldn't cook anything. And I did teach myself in time to cook complex dishes like an omelette and uh, chicken breast. Yeah, so hopefully I'll put up some more videos um, of Japan and the area itself. It's Man of my word, I did. Loads to see and talk about and stuff. Uh, and if you have any questions, ask away. But sensible questions, not, not, not stupid questions. Um, so yeah, great. See you later. Thanks. Why did I do that? I just hit my head. <laughs> I just hit my head on something. <laughs> Most awkward ending to a video ever. And there's the song, the copyright song again. This makes no sense. I hope this video doesn't get copyrighted though. Um, very anticlimactic video, the sort of obligatory My Japanese Apartment video that everyone does when they come to Japan, but yeah, I mean, it was a pretty pretty rubbish video when all is said and done. Um, in terms of good and bad, I'd say good. The video, clearly some editing effort had gone into it. Um, there was like a story there. The bad was the presentation skills, the composition of the shots, the sound design, pretty much just everything, which is pretty shit to be honest. It would be pretty cool to go back in time to meet that guy, because I don't really see it as myself. I've been such a weird 10 years that I feel very different now to who I was then, but I'd love to go back and tell him, you know, one day you'll be in your own ramen shop, alone, getting drunk on one cup sake, and uh, not really sure <laughs> how I would have taken that, to be honest. In many ways, I, I don't like that video. The first real video that I was proud of on Abroad in Japan was the second video I made. And I'm not gonna react to that now, but that one I'd learned a lot from doing this video, and uh, I took that knowledge through and made that video, and it was a lot more sort of well edited and produced and presented. But as I said, I, I didn't really think this would lead anywhere. And for the first year that this video was up, I think it had a thousand views. Um, it's incredible now to see 762,000 people have watched it. If I had known that that many people would watch it, I would have put in a lot more effort, to be fair. But thank you for watching, guys, uh, and for joining me on the fourth day of Vlogmas. Sorry, the, the one cup sake is really kicking in. I'll be back in the next couple of days, still over again, but for now, no matter where you might be, out in the big wide world, I'll see you later. Back to my delicious bowl of ramen and my tasty pork. Yeah. Oh, uh.